thank you very much for coming and welcome to our session. We are going to talk uh, about how to take control of the push upgrades of our subscribers from uh, application building Heroku. My name is Rosa Martinez. I'm senior software engineer. I work in the DevOps team of Financial Force. Um, and obviously, I'm not Paul Hardaker. Uh, unfortunately, he's sick, so I'm here on his behalf. I'm Agustina Garcia. I work as principal software engineer. I'm also Salesforce MVP and hope to be able to cover his part well, and you can understand the, the session. OK, so let me start with a quick introduction about our company. Financial Force is the number one cloud ERP. And for SFDC customers, using Financial Force is a no-brainer because we seamlessly connect their front office activities with their back office. We have uh, different products like accounting, products automations, and some other. And we have offices across the globe. The headquarters is here in San Francisco, but we also have offices in Harrogate, UK, and in Granada, Spain, where Rosa and myself are based. We have uh, some customers. You can see that. I'm sure that some of these brands you are, familiar, are familiar for you. You can understand also the high volume of data that they can have and they can work with every single day. That's the main reason, or one of the main reasons, um, because post upgrades are really important for us when we upgrade our products to these customer orgs. This is today's agenda. We will first explain why Financial Ford needed to think in building an external application in order to handle the push upgrades of the customers. Um, we will show how it's currently working the push upgrades in Salesforce, and then we will demo the application we have developed in order to solve the issues we had. Um, we will explain how we are handling the flow of data from Salesforce to our Heroku application and the other way around as well. Finally, we will, have, we will have time for some takeaways and questions and answers. OK, so why push upgrade? First of all, because we want to maximize the number of customers that are on our latest versions. For us, it's really important that they can take advantage of our latest uh, features. Also, we would like to minimize the number of versions that we support. So if most of our customers are on our latest version, we only need to provide support maybe two previous versions, three versions uh, maximum. Also, we would like to minimize uh, the upgrade in order to, in terms of uh, decrease the risk of um, any risk that can happen during the upgrade, for example, minimize the number of uh, errors uh, because we are moving from a really old version to a, the latest one. And also, we want to decrease the time that we can spend doing this upgrade. For example, last point, minimize attrition. Our onboarding team needs to focus, uh, need to prepare a list of customers that have to upgrade to a certain version. If we have to handle 15 different versions for them, it's crazy. Also, if they have to do a pre-step and post-step after the upgrade, also the time that they have to consume is really, really high. So we want to decrease all this time. And also, uh, that's, that's our, our main points. But maybe if you are an, an ISV as well, for you, is, these points are the uh, same for you. But in our case, for financial force, we also need to think about that we have a multi-package solution. We do not upgrade just a single package. We have different package, packages that are dependent between them. For example, our product automation solution needs our ERP package as well installed in our customer orgs. And also, because we have more than 1,500 subscriber orgs, so we need to handle a really high volume of data. And current uh, Salesforce push upgrade process provides a really good solution, but we need something much better. Let's see how the push upgrade feature uh, works in Salesforce. The process is very simple. When we create a new package and we install it in a customer organization, this customer automatically becomes a subscriber of that package. If we go to the packaging org, here, from under the version tab, we can see that push upgrade button. If we click there, 
we can select a version of this package and then we will see a list of eligible subscribers to be pushed to that version. We need to specify a date and a time in order to start the process of the push. And when we click in that schedule button, we are creating a push request. There's another page where we can see the list of push requests already created in this packaging org. We can see some details, like the number of subscribers included in a push request, its status, if it's in progress, if it's failed, if it uh, succeeded. In the case of being still in progress, or not yet in progress, but only created, we will be able to see uh, an additional, additional button in the action columns called Abort. Uh, if we click in that button, we will prevent the push upgrade to happen. Um, As you can see, this is a very good feature, but in Financial Force we needed some extra things. We realized that we needed a bit more flexible user interface uh, that allow us to, for instance, edit the list of subscribers included in a push request. We wanted also to have the possibility of cancel one or more than one push request in one single click. And also, we wanted to have a single point where we were able to see the complete, the complete list of subscribers of all our packages. Right now, we have to handle it from every packaging org we have. In addition to that, due to the high volume of subscribers we have right now in the company, sometimes we have to wait for several minutes until we were able to see the complete, complete list of subscribers eligible uh, for being pushed to a certain version. In these cases, we need a bit more of performance. So we decided to build a, an application in Heroku. In this case, uh, we did it with Node uh, for the backend and React for the frontend. Let's see a demo about the solution we have implemented, and then we will explain how it works. This is our application, as you can see, it's in Heroku. It's an external one. We can see here a list of all the subscribers we have. The navigation and the performance is very good. There's a big difference. As you can notice here, we can see the complete list of subscribers, not only the subscribers eligible to be pushed to a certain version. We can see all the subscribers we have in every package we have with uh, the current version. We can use the filters in the header. So we filter the subscribers we have in the screen. We can also use, as you can see, a combination of different filters. We can take advantage of this counter we have here, which is updated with the changes we do in the filters. And when we want to create a new push request, we have this schedule push page. We have to select one of the packages uh, we are handling. In this case, it's uh, not a real environment, but uh, a testing one. We have uh, this environment connected to a single package, but it's able to be connected to more than one. We select one of our products, then we need to select, specify one version of this package. And here we can see the list of subscribers uh, with that uh, current version installed. Usually, when we schedule a push request, we need to have into account the working hours of our customers. So, we can make use of this additional filter or instance, and <coughs> we can specify a bit more uh, the geographical area where we want to include the subscribers in this push request, in this case only for this instance. Then we need to specify 
a version to be pushed to if uh, our customers, this group of customers is in 1.7, we are going to push them to the 1.8, and as well we need to specify a date and a time. We have a confirmation page, and if everything is okay, we can also see the list of uh, push requests already created. In this case, we can remove a complete push request. We can also edit one of them by removing one single uh, subscriber included. And even if we have more than one push request pending to be started, we can click on that Abort All button and get rid of all of them. In the case of having a push request with failures, which this is the case, we can easily see the error that happened to every subscriber. Um, the last thing I want to show is here. In the case of being enough uh, push request with uh, failed status, we are able to click on the retry button and then create a new push request including only the subscribers that have been failed during the, the initial one. Let's see how is, the working, how is this working. There, are, there is a few objects relevant about the push request in every packaging org. What we are doing in order to synchronize them with a single um, uh, Postgres database is using Heroku Connect. Heroku Connect is an add-on available in Heroku, which uh, through a very simple configuration allows us to bring all the data we need it in a relational database in Heroku. We are using one instance of Heroku Connect per packaging org, and all these instances of Heroku Connect are writing the data in the same Postgres database. Then this database is used by our backend, which is building Node, as I said, and our frontend is consuming a set of uh, microservices offered by the backend. I would like also to mention, by the way, that uh, the communication between our backend and our Postgres database is through SQLite, which is an ORM that makes very easy the handling of the data. And this is the way we have to retrieve the data from Salesforce to our application. But when we need to create a new object, when we create a new push request, we create uh, package push request and package push jobs. These are the two objects we need to create. Um, in that case, we are not using Heroku Connect because it has a delay of 10 minutes in the synchronization. And when we create a new push request, or especially when we need to edit uh, a value like the status, we need to do it immediately. So in that case, when we need to do send information to the organization, we are doing it through the SOAP API of Salesforce. Um, using GS4, which is a library that uh, helps us a lot in order to handle the connection with the organizations and also the communication via API. Okay, so that's what we have right now. This is the version one of these internal products. Remember, this is not something that we are sell selling. It's something that we needed for our internal um, use. And right now, we are sharing with all of you our, um, our issues, those issues that we found, how we solve it, and so on. Hope that it's also useful for all of you. Our future plans, something that you can also take into account. Um, we would like to uh, double check if a push upgrade is going to work in our customer org. So for example, imagine that you are going to upgrade a package and fails because the number of fields on, related to an object uh, achieve the limit that case upgrade is going to fail. And we want to avoid that. 
So that's why this healthy check is going to help us to realize which one is going to work and which one is going to fail, so we can fix it before. Also, push multiple packets at the same time. I told you at the beginning that we have a multi-package solution, but version one only works with one single package at a time. It's going to be um, a really, uh, well, still is a, uh, a slow solution for our onboarding team because they have to go to our solution, select the package, push, select another package, and push. The future they have just to say, OK, let's go for the version that we deliver for all our packages in a Spring 19, click on push, and all the packages will be installed one after another. Finally, install package. When we have a brand new customer, we have to install the package. And after that, we can use our tool and do the push. But we want to do something else. We want to also be able to install from our Heroku application from the very beginning. So takeaways, as I said, all these are ideas that you can also take into account. We build a flexible UI. We want to we have certain um, uh, things to, to fix or to enhance, taking into account the limitations that Salesforce has right now uh, uh, in order to solve our, well, in order to work with our use case. This UI is in React. And also, uh, we were using Salesforce API, so we have not created or do this push upgrade from ourselves. We have used what, uh, what uh, Salesforce is already providing to us. Also, we are we have been talking about um, all those objects that Salesforce already provide in this Salesforce API, push request, metadata package, and so on. Then replicate data from multiple packages. Rosa just showed in a couple of slides before. We have different packaging orgs. All of them provide the information, uh, package request, metadata package, subscriber, but all of them live in different places. And our Heroku application is using a single um, uh, Postgres database. So what we have done is with Heroku Connect, put everything in one place, and use that single database in order to show all our data in the Heroku application. Finally, manage push requests via, well, push upgrade via this uh, Salesforce API. Again, Salesforce API in order to retrieve data and to post data. And that's all. That's all. Thank you very much for coming. This time for questions and answers. We will be here, so we still have a couple of minutes. If you have any question, please. Uh, the question is, if we have too many orgs, uh, how can we do it? Uh, basically, that's what we are going to work on our version 2. But the idea is that once we are able to do the connection to every single package in org, everything is configured, or all the data we retrieve in, in our Postgres database and in our um, Heroku application in Node, what we are going to do is a kind of loop, uh, retrieve the data from packaging org 1, packaging org 2, and so on. We have not tested, obviously, but um, remember, we are in Heroku. With the add-ons and so on, you can increase uh, the, the scalability and so on. We hope not to get too many issues, actually. How would the reporting, like, let's say something epic fail, the test case fails, how do you report it to the developer or, like, you know, once it fails? We, we, the question is, if there is any failure, uh, how can we get this information back? Well, uh, there are some specific objects. I can show you the list of uh, objects we need to bring. Masato. As you can see there, there's an object called package push error. This is the object that brings uh, to our application uh, the information related with the errors that the, a push job could have. At the end, Salesforce uh, push request object, if you Google Salesforce push upgrade objects, you can find the list of objects that are necessary for this. And all of them will provide to you the information. Any other question? OK, great. Thank you so much Thank for coming much. here, and see you next time.